all the best science, cutting edge science is used in breeding these animals to try to maximize reproductive success. To get more Sumatran rhino, uh, more Sumatran rhino on earth, it can be achieved in the, in the very, very near uh, future. So it's been about, you know, it's been over four years since we've had the Sumatran rhino birth. With the Sumatran rhino, obviously there's a program in Y Canvas to uh, try and produce more babies in a semi-captive environment. The, the animals are living in, in pens in the rainforest in a natural environment. Um, what are the challenges here and, and what is the current strategy for producing more babies at Y Canvas with the animals that we currently have? We at the SRS now are still focusing on the natural uh, natural breeding, uh, but we will also support all uh, any any effort that uh, to boost the Sumatran rhino propagation, but we have to consider all the risk and, and mm -hmm. benefits. There are challenges, there, there aren't new challenges. These are the challenges that have been around for a while. And, and the bottom line is Sumatran rhinos have trouble reproducing, right? This starts, I mean, which is a very frightening thing for a species that's so, so imperiled. Um, and it stems from having such low population numbers, right? Even in the wild, are mm -hmm. they able to find each other or are populations, is the population so low, males and females can't even find each other to reproduce. And we know that there are, is a host of health problems interfering reproduction, including cysts and tumors and, and other health issues um, that are precluding animals from getting pregnant or, or carrying pregnancies to, to full term. Um, so it's, it's an extreme and extremely concerning situation. Uh, the good news is that there are experts in Indonesia and frankly from around the world who are focusing on this matter. We know more now than we ever have before. Um, and there are various strategies um, for trying to address it. Uh, so it means breeding the rhinos as often as possible. And this is done very scientifically, right? So they're bred when they're at the right time in their cycle. And the veterinarians at the Sumatran Rhino Sanctuary, of course, monitor that very closely um, and breed the animals when they can. Since 2016, uh, we, uh, we have uh, some... Uh, efforts to breed more rhino. Uh, Harapan is potential male, but we need to learn how to breed. He was new to this environment and then, mm. uh, yeah, he need, he need more learn. And we also pairing uh, Andalas, the father of the, the calf, with other female with name Rosa. She is also have a different uh, story because uh, she she has uh, interrupt, uh, uh, interrupted the behavior. So the behavior is, is quite uh, a challenge for us because she is so afraid of the, the rhinos, uh, but close, very close to human because uh, yeah, in the wild she was found uh, like that in, in the forest. But the challenge is about the pregnancies. So uh, I think we start to to make uh, to pairing them in 2016, successful breeding, and in 2017 we have uh, the first pregnancy on Rosa. But uh, she lost her pregnancy at the time. Uh, so until 2020, uh, three years we lost already lost uh, 
seven uh, times of pregnancy due to the the uh, tumor, the the pathology of the the uterus. So this is quite uh, uh, frustrating for us, but we are keep on trying on 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 her process is is quite uh, is quite uh, long, yeah. For for the uh, mutton rhino natural breeding, we have to put them for days and then uh, yeah, I think three to two, five days and then uh, yeah, at uh, between that time that the, the natural breeding will will uh, occur. They're trying to reduce the inner birth interval with the captive animals. Um, in other words, not keeping the calves with mom so long, making sure they're with mom long enough, you know, until they're able to be on their own. Um, but then, but then getting mom often able to maybe reproduce again. Uh, there's a husbandry and propagation committee that includes an art or an artificial reproductive technology subcommittee uh, that is working. It's comprised of experts from around the globe working on this issue. So all the best science, cutting edge science is used in breeding these animals to try to maximize reproductive success. Um, and again, experts have learned a lot over the years. Um, everybody's throwing everything they have towards this problem. I know that the focus has been on natural breeding at, at Y Canvas for many years. Is there starting to be a shift in looking at artificial sort of more, more uh, attempts at, at that kind of technology? Or are we still yeah. looking at trying to do it the old fashioned way? Natural breeding would maybe be everybody's first choice when that can work, but there are things precluding it clearly. And so there are, are a lot of global experts looking at how art can could best be used. We, 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 we do the artificial insemination on, on Bina. Uh, the challenge is the, the, the uh, quality of the sperm that we have, the frozen semen that we have is is very, very low, so it's not, not success until now. Prior to COVID-19, there was a lot of discussion and obviously a plan to potentially capture wild rhinos in Y Canvas and then bring them into the breeding facility, um, adding more potentially fertile uh, animals. At this uh, time, at this moment, we're still uh, collecting data from uh, the rhino in, in the wild. That's, uh, and then also there's also some some uh, capture preparation that also being uh, being planned, but it will be ba will be based on the data uh, collected. Plans for capturing rhinos are ongoing. It have they have been hampered by COVID, like so many things. Um, but the standard operating procedures for the captures have been updated. There are collaborative trajectory teams. In other words, these teams that are out there looking for rhinos. Um, and they've been narrowing down locations for targeting rhinos that we hope to capture. Again, up to, the goal is up to six rhinos from across the, the three regions. There are camera traps in the field to help determine the best locations for, for pit traps for capturing the rhinos. Um, working closely with the Ministry of Environment, the government of Indonesia, once the best pit trap locations are, are identified and then the teams can start working on that. Um, we've been doing trainings. We, the global community, the Indonesian and global community, have been undertaking trainings virtually as we can, not ideal, but the best we can do in these circumstances. And then there are in-person trainings scheduled, you know, for as soon as it can happen. Uh, again, bearing in mind that Indonesia is really suffering right now with mm. this pandemic, but we hope to have it completed um, soon. And and the, the training needs were identified by the teams on the ground. And so um, we, their partners from around the world, are trying to help as best we can. You, you say that they've been monitoring, tracking animals, looking at where, they're, where they are. Do we have any good numbers on the wild rhino population at Y Canvas? Um, is there a sense of if they're stable, decreasing, growing? And do we have any sense that maybe, you know, there are, have we seen any babies or any signs of babies or, or pregnant females or anything? Do we know if, if, if breeding is still happening in this location? I have to be honest, Jeremy, that we have concerns about the population in Wicombus and frankly, throughout the range. Um, there, there aren't as many signs of rhinos as there were a decade ago. So um, we are concerned we take hope in the fact that there are so many partners in Indonesia 
and around the world working together to try to save these species.